We are still editing and today we are going to improve your text by focusing on your use of verbs. Because verbs describe the actions in a text, they play a crucial role in making it more engaging. Still, academics have several bad habits when it comes to verbs, so today we're going to look into this. So first I want you to look at how strong the verbs are that you're using. Just to give you an example, the verb is is a throwaway verb. You can use it for everything. In the last episode, for example, I was editing a sentence and I ended up writing A is indicative of B and then I said, oh, but we don't want to use is or any, actually any form of to be because we have a better option and in this case I replaced is indicative of with indicates. So this is more eloquent, it's more concise and the verb carries more meaning. So this is why you would say indicates in this case is a strong verb whereas is on any form of to be is a weak verb. So you should go through your text and find the instances where you use any variation of the word to be and see if you can replace it with a better verb. So this is the example we already talked about. A is indicative of B and we simply change it to A indicates B. And another example would be these values are consistent with previous data on clicks used for echolocation. So the problem is with are consistent with. A better word for this would be these values fit previous data on clicks used for echolocation. Another possibility would be agree with, etc. Looking out for is or is being will also help you find instances of passive voice that you want to change into active voice. As I said in the previous episode, in all sections of the paper, except for maybe the method section, you want to predominantly use active voice that is considered to be better style and more engaging for the reader. For example, here in this context, research suggests that visual perceptual judgments and action guidance are controlled by partially overlapping, but nonetheless distinct neural systems. So you don't need in this context, because the context is a given. So research suggests that, and now I would go in here and change it, um, because we want this active, right? We have the we have the uh, actor here, which are the overlapping, overlapping, but not, but nonetheless distinct neural systems control, or partially overlapping, uh, control visual perceptual judgment and action guidance, and you can actually remove nonetheless. And this is how we leave it, All right? Another way academics often miss the opportunity to use a strong verb is by turning it into a boring noun that is much less impactful. So you should go through your text and look at each sentence to find nouns that could actually be turned into a verb again, which would make the sentence more active and more interesting. So for this example, there are a couple of problems, but the main, the main problem we are looking he at here is differences. So differences is a noun that can be turned into a verb to differ. So things differ. What differs? Groups differ. Uh, how do they differ? They differ in their walking paths. And this is it. This is all that is being said in that sentence. 
we we just add the figures here, uh, one to five. I don't know. Another problem here. So implications. That is a noun that you can easily change to imply. Our findings imply that. So the main problem also with this first sentence is that it has almost zero information. And now that we're trying to turn implications into a verb, we realize that we don't have an idea what is being implied. So our findings imply that. Now we have to look into the next sentence, while. So while click-based echolocation is useful for avoiding collisions with obstacles at head level. So now we need to know who should be aware of this fact. Right? Great care should be taken in creating awareness of comparably lower efficiency of echolocation for detecting obstacles on the ground. The implication is for instruction. So instructors, or maybe instructors and learners, must acknowledge that it will not help avoiding collisions with obstacles at ground level. Let's keep it parallel. So the new sentence is, our findings imply that while click-based echolocation is useful for avoiding collisions with obstacles at head level, instructors and learners must acknowledge or must be aware just that it will not help avoiding collisions with obstacles at the at ground level. It this technique. So our findings imply that while click-based echolocation is useful for avoiding collisions with obstacles at head level, instructors and learners must be aware that this technique will not help avoiding collisions with obstacles at ground level. And the third thing I want you to pay attention to before I have to pack away the camera because it's raining is how close your main verb is to the subject of a sentence. Especially in longer sentences where you use subclauses as inlets, it often happens that the main subject of the sentence and the predicate that goes with it are too far from each other in the text. So that is a good way to lose your reader on the way through your text. So you want to avoid that, move your main verb, the predicate, close to the subject. So this is an example where the verb is not very close to the, or the main verb, verb, where the main verb is not very close to the subject and we want to change that. So the subject is a stable intrinsic mechan mechanical response and the verb is can or can occur in this case. So we want to change this. We want the two next to each other. So I will just pick this up and move it here. A stable intrinsic mechanical response can occur with neither feed forward nor feedback uh, mediated changes in neural drive when a perturbation is encountered at high, high running speed. This is that. Then I don't like the neither nor here. So. Let's change that to without feed forward or feedback mediated changes in your drive, comma, when a perturbation is encountered at high running speeds. Now, this is passive, is encountered at high running speeds, as a stupid is again, uh, and there is a noun that can be changed into a verb. So let's change this. So we need a subject, and I happen to know that it's about waterfowl. So when a waterfowl is running, is perturbed at high speeds, a stable intrinsic mechanical response can occur without feed forward or feedback mediated changes in neural drive. So this is how I would change it.
When a waterfowl's running speed is perturbed at high speeds, a stable intrinsic mechanical response can occur without feedforward or feedback-mediated changes in neural drive. And here's a, an example of why you want the subject and predicate Kate, early in the sentence, so not just close together, but also early in the sentence. And if you look at this sentence, it's also weird. It has a passive construct here, and then the active construct here. And this is the main sentence. The tracking hovering process starts. They are describing a flowchart, actually. So I could look up the flowchart. And I will change a couple of things. So first, I want to change during into while. While cruising. This is also uh, changing a noun into a verb, comma. The UAV which is an unmanned aerial vehicle. And now it does its action, starts the tracking and hovering process, or hovering observation process, when, and now we have a second subject, the onboard camera captures and identifies a sensitive target. So now we know very early where this is going. It's about the UAV starting the tracking and hovering observation process. That's what the uh, flowchart looked like, so I will change the sentence to this. While cruising, the UAV starts the tracking and hovering observation process when the onboard camera captures and identifies a sensitive target. As always, you will find the information that I gave you in this video as a PDF on my website. You'll find the link in the description box below. If you want to watch the other videos in this series, wait for the end card. There will be a link to the playlist. And finally, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day. Bye-bye.